on this week's episode of Fishing 411 TV. Mark and Jake Romanak have walleye on the menu. During March and early April, countless walleye migrate to the western basin of Lake Erie. It's here that most of Lake Erie's walleye spawn, and it's also where a unique jigging lure known as the blade bait comes into its own. Wind, rain, and runoff at this time of year often turn waters of Lake Erie in the color of chocolate milk. To compensate for the turbid water, inventive anglers turn to the distinctive vibration only a blade bait can produce. It's lights out fishing action this week for eating sized Lake Erie walleye. Man, that's just a solid fish that time. Oh my goodness, Dan, <laughs> when you that's catch them in eight feet of water, they get to the boat pretty quick, <laughs> don't they, Jake? They sure do. What a fish, Dan. Oh man. What a fish. <laughs> oh, and he just pops off in the net too. He wasn't hooked very good, but he was hooked. <laughs> yeah, baby. Look at that. Man, I love this walleye fishing. Springtime, first nice days of the year, fast action walleye, it doesn't get much better than that. That is a good one. I think I'm gonna take him and put him on the flay board, Jake. That's a good one right there. <laughs> the setting for this week's episode is a place called Maumee Bay. Now, Maumee Bay is part of Lake Erie and it's located very near the town of Toledo. If you're gonna to come to Maumee Bay, you're gonna to wanna to buy two fishing licenses because this is border water. You're gonna to wanna to have an Ohio license and you're also gonna want a Michigan license because you never can tell where those fish are gonna end up. They could be in either state and so if you have both licenses, you're good to go. You're all spunk to it, Dad. <laughs> Got some thump, does it? All right. That's the right flavor. Man, these fish are so much fun. Oh, good job there, young man. Just absolutely inhaled it. <laughs> That's pretty much what we're after today. Not giant walleyes, but numbers of walleyes. In Lake Erie in the springtime, there's a lot of fish that you can catch on these reef structures. And, uh, and today we're fishing, it's kind of a little bit different. It's not exactly structure that you can see on the map, um, but there's a lot of little humps. And when you start driving over them, you'll see these little humps that come up. And uh, these fish are just absolutely loaded on it this time of year. Not big fish, but just sheer numbers of walleye. There's a fish. Get the speed bubble in here. Come here and talk to me here. There we go. Another nice eating sized walleye. Oh, hold on here. Get this guy unhooked and back in the water. Drop him back in the water. <clears throat> we'll flesh this out just a little bit. You know, we're in Maumee Bay, and Maumee Bay is unique in that there's a couple of things going on here. Of course, you've got walleyes that spawn in, in Maumee Bay because there's a lot of good gravel on the bottom here, really good spawning habitat. <clears throat> but you also have the Maumee River, and walleyes run the Maumee River as well. Well, when those Maumee River fish spawn, after they're done, they drop back to Maumee Bay, and they spread out on these flats, and they put on the feed bag. And I'm talking about fast action. This is not a place where you're going to come and catch trophy fish, but it's a place where you're going to come and catch lots of fish. You know, when it comes to fishing in the springtime, I think one of the biggest misconceptions is that walleye spawn in the river. I mean, that's what you hear all the time is they just spawn on the river. Well, here in the Lake Erie system, that's just simply not the case. Most of the fish are actually spawning out in the lake. And what you get are these pretty decent sized males. That one swung around on them. 
these pretty decent sized males that just come up here on top of these reef structures and these are spawning walleyes. So the majority of walleyes in the Lake Erie system spawn actually in the lake. That doesn't mean that places like the Detroit River um, and maybe you know the Maumee River, they still get a run of fish and there's still a lot of walleyes there. But the majority of the fish in that Lake Erie system are right here in the lake to be caught. So that's not a bad male right there. And that's what I'm hoping to see a lot of here today. Well, the blade bait presentation is very good. It's very effective. Uh, nothing new about that. They've been doing it around these parts of the world for a long time. But there are ways to refine this blade bait presentation and make it even better. First thing that I would recommend you consider doing is replacing out the factory hooks that come on them. The factory hooks that come on them are okay, but they're not great. If you want to hook every fish that bites, you want the sharpest possible hook you can put on there. And so what we're using is something called trocars. They're made by Eagle Claw, and they come in a variety of different sizes. But I recommend you stay with the same size hook that the manufacturer puts on their bait. That way you don't change the action of the bait. But what a trocar does, it's very, very sharp, laser sharp. And in fact, what happens is that you stick almost every single fish that bites. When you make that simple change, you'll be amazed how many of the fish uh, that you were missing turn into hook and landed fish. Special considerations provided by Daiwa Corporation and Motor Guide. Bite fish, not your trolling motor. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's elite sport shows. Hey, got another fish going. It's a fun thing. You know, the type of fishing that we're doing is actually very simple, and uh, just about anybody can enjoy it. Uh, we're just side drifting, and uh, this is a pretty decent fish here. I feel like it might be a... Oh, he's about the same size, about the same size. This might be a... Oh, that's about as big as you want to alley-oop. <laughs> well, as I was talking about, this is the kind of fishing that just about anybody can accommodate. Uh, it doesn't require any kind of special equipment, although we're going to do some unique things today that I think are going to refine this presentation. But just a boat that's turned sideways, drifting with the current, dragging jigs along the bottom, fishing things like blade baits, lipless cranks are going to catch you these fish. So when you look around, you'll see that there's all kinds of boats here. There's charter boats out here, there's small tin boats, uh, there's tournament style boats. There's a little bit of everything out here and everybody's catching fish. And that's what makes it fun. It's like a big party on Lake Erie. Well, if you look all around me, you're going to notice really quickly that the water's dirty. And here on Lake Erie, that pretty much happens every spring, no matter what you do. And we're fishing in front of the Maumee Bay, in front of the mouth of the Maumee Bay here right now, and this is pretty much always muddy water. The Maumee River's always dirty, there's always dirty water coming in, and then the one thing we see in this lake a lot is a lot of wind. So what you have is you have um, dirty water coming from the river, you have dirty water being churned up from just the wind itself, and so the water's pretty much always dirty. The one thing that I like to do, you know, when I fish with blade bait, or even a jig and a minnow or anything, is I like to add scent to that lure, and that's just one extra trigger. Um, you know, that vibration of the blade bait, that fish can feel that in his lateral line. He comes up to investigate, it smells good, it looks good, he eats it. And it's pretty much as simple as that, and uh, it's pretty unbelievable how many extra fish were put in the boat because of scent. I was one of those guys that was a little bit skeptical when it came to fishing scent, but after seeing it time after time after time, scent just simply puts more fish in the boat. One of the things that I think is interesting is that uh, you can catch these fish on jigs, you can also catch them on blade baits, but the blade bait, from my perspective, is kind of a nice uh, presentation, particularly for people who haven't done a lot of walleye jigging, um, and the reason for it is that there's no question when you have a bite. When you're jig fishing, the bite feels like just a tick in the line, it's very subtle. And if you don't set the hook at that moment, you're probably gonna miss that fish. With blade baits, these fish hit them. And I mean, they just whack them hard. Um, almost like they're angry at the blade bait. There is no question when you've got a bite with a blade bait, you know you got a bite. And so, like that one right there. <laughs> so if you're a rookie fisherman, you might wanna check out the blade baits because it makes it really easy to tell when you got Mr. Walter on there, like this one. Oh boy, that guy was not coming unbuckled. That one's a little skinny for fillets. Back he goes. The style of fishing that we were doing is primarily jigging. We were using leadhead jigs. We were also using blade baits. And fortunately, the same rods work really well for both presentations. About a six and a half to a seven foot medium light to medium action spinning rod is perfect. Now we use 25 to 35 class reels on these and we also loaded them with super braid. The braid that we happened to be using was Berkeley Nanofill. Oh, baby. I love these walleyes on light tackle, man. They are so much fun. Thank you, Jake. Appreciate the 
assistance there. I think it took two nets to do that one, Dad. Two nets and neck come apart? <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't pretty, but we got him in the boat. Is that operator error or is that equi equipment error. malfunction? I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but fortunately, the fish came in the boat, so I guess we're golden in that regard. You know, I think one of the reasons why people enjoy this style of fishing is, frankly, it's relaxing. You mean drifting around out here and just a nice gentle breeze, the boat bobbing around, catching fish, high-fiving, having a good time with your buddies. And, uh, you know, they're not big fish, but you're not going to find better fish for the table. Um, we're taking home some of these, no doubt about it. Walleye, <laughs> they are good eating fish. This one ain't as big as yours, Dad. This is a little guy. Spunky, though. Spunky. Absolutely just hammered it. It's one of the good things about this whole Lake Erie system here is that it's so healthy. When you think of Lake Erie, you know, it's kind of known for big walleyes. It always has been, but, you know, fish like this all the way in between, it's just a super, super healthy fishery full of fish from all different sizes. Special considerations provided by Eagle Claw, the only fish hooks made in America. Additional considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics. Trolling without a fish hawk is called boating. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. Crankbaits are awesome fishing tools, but if you like fishing with crankbaits as much as I do, you've probably come to the conclusion that either casting them or trolling them, they don't come out of the package necessarily ready to fish. What happens is these baits aren't perfectly tuned. Well, what do you mean by perfectly tuned? When a crankbait is perfect, what happens when you cast it or you troll it, it dives straight down into the water. And when it does so, what happens is it gives you the maximum action that that lure has available, and it also allows that lure to dive to its maximum depth. So it's very important to be able to know how to tune crankbaits. And unfortunately, most of us aren't very good at it or don't know how to do it. And what we're gonna try and do is show you some tips that make you a better crankbait fisherman, help you learn how to tune your baits better. We're gonna use the easy crankbait tuner to show you how to tune a crankbait. But before we can do that, there's a couple tips you have to know about how to position your boat properly to get a perfectly tuned crankbait. What most people do when they tune a crankbait is they're trolling and they like to drag the bait out behind the back of the boat. I don't like to do that. And the reason for that is the boat is displacing water. And when the boat displaces water, you don't get smooth water flowing over top of the crankbait. They can be tuned that way, but it's much more difficult. I prefer to let the boat just drift. And when the boat is drifting, you can get a perfect crankbait tune every time. Well, I'm just gonna cast the bait out a little ways. I'm gonna point the rod tip right at the lure and I'm gonna reel pretty fast. What I'm looking for is whether the bait is running straight down, left of center, or right of center. In this case, the bait runs a little bit left of center. That's where the easy crankbait tuner is gonna come in because this bait is running to the left. In order to get it to run straight down, I have to bend the wire tire, the pull point, a little bit to the right. So what I'm basically gonna do here is take my, my easy crankbait tool, give it a little click, you hear that click? That click tells me I made just a really small adjustment to the lure. Then what I can do is now that I've made an adjustment, I can make another cast. So I'm just gonna pitch it back out there again, make another cast, start reeling again, and I'm looking at that lure to see if I made any changes. And indeed, what I did is this bait is running almost perfectly straight down now. So what happened is I bent the pull point just enough to bring the bait in running dead center, and that's what you're looking for. I wanna show you a little bit about what makes the Easy Crankbait Tool such a unique crankbait tuning device. It's got a short jaw and it's got a long jaw, and when I line it up on the crankbait, I'm gonna put the short jaw on the pull point or the wire. I'm gonna put the long jaw on the edge of the crankbait lip, and what I'm gonna do when I give it a little squeeze, you hear it click. Well, that clicking motion, what it is, is a slip jaw, so it prevents you from putting too much pressure and bending the wire too much. The beauty of it is, is by looking at the device here, you can see how I can tighten it or loosen it, so I can put any tension that I need to put on this jaw. Once it slips, in other words, once the jaw slips, you have to reset it, and that's really easy to do. You can hear it click, you just take your fingers, snap it back in place. So after each adjustment, you have to put the slip jaw back in position to be able to make the next adjustment. You know, I really like crankbaits, and it doesn't matter whether you cast them or whether you troll them. In order to get the most out of crankbaits, they have to be tuned properly. And that's the beauty of the Easy Crankbait Tuner, is as the name applies, it's an easy way to tune crankbaits so you can be a better crankbait fisherman. Man, that feels good. I love the feel of it. Oh, oh yes, yeah, it is a good Dad, fish. Nice fish. That is a good fish. Let me get this guy up here a little closer for you. <laughs> yes. One of Lake Erie's finer, beautiful looking fish. 
You know, using your Lowrance electronics are probably one of the most fundamental keys to fishing in any kind of fishing that you're doing. In this structure fishing that we're doing, it's absolutely super important to use your electronics. Let me show you what I'm talking about. When I'm going here, I'm gonna be looking at my graph and I wanna be able to see the bottom. And what's gonna happen is the bottom is just gonna to start to come up just a little bit. And it might only be a two or three foot difference when that bottom comes up, but that's what those fish are, are on. And you can see here with my graph that I have on this side, I have the GPS and those contour lines will show the same thing. So what I'm doing is I'm using my graph and I'm using them together. I'm using my GPS and my sonar together. And when I find those little bit of difference where the bottom comes up a little bit, I can save a waypoint on those spots. Then I make a drift right over top of those spots. And then once I catch a couple fish on those spots, I can literally make that exact drift over and over and over again. Sooner or later, you're gonna catch all the fish that wanna bite in that certain spot. So then you drive around and you find it again. And if you look at my graph, you're gonna see a lot of different waypoints. And what those are, are just little different humps that come up. And those little spots right there are where those fish are on. Special considerations provided by Trailmaster Boat Trailers and Lakeside Motorsports. Special considerations provided by Procure, ruthlessly effective bait sense. You know, one of the really cool things about this reef fishery or the structure fishing here on Lake Erie is it's not an expensive style of fishing. Basically, there's three different presentations you're going to use when you come out here. The first one is pretty simple. It's just a plastic and a jig. You might want to switch that plastic out. If it's a tough bite, you could use a minnow as well. Um, another presentation that's really popular here in the local fish it a lot is this hair jig right here. And this again comes in a lot of different colors, a lot of different sizes. This is a half ounce, which is pretty nice because when you're drifting, using a little bit heavier of a jig, it's just easier to feel the bottom. But you fish it just like that, and you might put a little stinger hook on there as well if the bite's a little bit tough. And the last presentation that a lot of guys like to use is a blade bait. And a blade bait is nothing more than a chunk of lead with some metal on it, and it's got a lot of vibration. So when the water's a little bit dirtier and it gets to be that tougher bite, a lot of times we'll go to this blade bait because in that dirty water, those fish can feel it in their lateral line. But between these three different presentations, it's all it really takes to be successful out here on Lake Erie. You know, another thing to keep in mind about this fishery is that we're relatively close to shore. And a good example today is beautiful. This is just perfect conditions. But yesterday, we had a colossal blow here. I mean, it was ripping out here. And so the main lake was very rough, five, six, seven foot seas. And so a lot of people don't want to go out and struggle in that rough water, and that's understandable. Yet still, even with those big winds, you can fish in close here because when you're fishing in skinny water, for the most part, we've been fishing in eight to 12 foot of water today, um, you don't get big waves in here. So even on a windy day, you can still fish here Whereas if you want to go offshore, there's no way. It's going to be way too rough. So uh, there's always a way to salvage the day. When the wind's blowing, get in shallow here and scratch yourself out some fish. <laughs> sure tunked it though. Whoa, there is a fish. Oh, Jakers, you're going to like this one. This is one of those nicer males we've been waiting to see. I like that. I like that. If you're wondering why these males don't get as big as the females, they don't need to. The females, they gotta get big because biologically they need to create a lot of eggs to be able to perpetuate the species. Males, of course, don't have to get so big because all they're creating, of course, is just semen. And so the males typically don't get much bigger than 24, 25, 26 inches is about your, the largest you're ever gonna see. Females, of course, get much, much bigger. Well, that one right there, is a pretty good specimen from Lake Erie male walleye. Come on, Bubba. Thank you, Jakers. Thank you. A lot of the structure or these reefs that we've been talking about are very small. Some of them are not much bigger than about one or two boat widths across. Others are larger. Of course, because these structures are small, in order to stay in them, you have to have some way of knowing where they're at. Well, we're using GPS on our uh, Lowrance carbon units. Uh, we have split screen sonar and GPS. So every time we catch a fish, we save a waypoint. So we know where those fish are caught. We can go back and make short drifts over top of them. And that's the high tech way of doing it. But there's also a low tech way of doing it. And we'll show you how to do that as well. You know, the other way to mark where these structures are is pretty simple. You drive around and you find them with your graph. And then you can just throw a marker buoy like this out. You talk about basic setup. You know, you throw this marker buoy out, you know exactly where those fish are. 
Now what you can do is you can position your boat around that marker buoy. The benefit of that is the boat's not right on top of that structure. Some of the structure we're fishing today is fairly shallow. So once you put that boat over the top of it, you're actually spooking the fish. So you throw this marker buoy out and then you can pitch and cast to the marker buoy and you can catch fish around that. Once you've caught two or three fish around that spot, you go, you pull your marker buoy and you drive around and you find another one. You know, it's time for another drift. One of the keys here is once you get on fish, you want to stay on them, so don't make those long slides, make short, precise slides, you'll catch more fish. If you're interested in getting involved in some of this blade bait fishing, here locally there's two very popular blade baits. You're going to find the Reef Runner Cicada, super popular, lots of folks use them. They're made right here in Marblehead, not far from where we're fishing today. And the other one is Captain Jay's Blade Baits, and um, that's also a local guy, also made locally. So both of those blade baits really get it done here in Maumee Bay. Oh, that's a nice fish, Dad. Oh, geez, a real that is a nice fish, actually. That is a very nice fish, Jake. Uh, he was kind of dogging it. It didn't feel like he was that big of a fish. That is a beautiful male right there. That's what we're looking for, young man. Scoop him, Dad. I got nice it. fish. Look at that. Wow. Oh, baby. That's a little bit better average. I think I upgraded my fillets. Because <laughs> that is a nice walleye. Wow. There you have it. And that one's probably about 21, 22 inches. So there are some good fish to be had here. And uh, it looks like dad's hooked up too, huh? That's the cool thing about this fishery here. When you hook one, it's always another one to be caught. Yeah, yours is a little bit more impressive than mine, but double headers, I'll take that all day long. Hey, my name's Jake Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 411 Television. I hope you take this information, come out to Lake Erie, and catch you a bunch of eater walleyes like this one right here. Closed captioning provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports dealer. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle Company, Evan Rood Outboards, Starcraft Marine, Cisco Fishing Systems, Yakima Bait, Jay's Sporting Goods, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Move Seats, Lawrence Electronics, and by Precision Trolling Data. <laughs> I don't know if you can see my bibs. It's, it's warm out. I don't need bibs on today. It's a, for my own protection. They, uh, if you're wondering if these fish are actively spawning, I'd say, yeah, yeah, they're actively spawning. Um, bring your bibs. You'll be glad you did.